atoms to be ejected from their atoms. It's an offensive move based on ionization. Ionization disrupts the structure of atoms of which all living matter is composed. An atom is part of a molecule, and molecules are parts of the cell. The cell is the structural and functional unit of all living matter, a tiny machine with a basic job to do. Cells operating with thousands of other cells of various shapes and performing special chores, make up tissues and organs. Organs are departments in a complex factory, the human body, which is engaged in the manufacture of an important product, life. An atom then seems unimportant and infinitesimal, a tiny cog on a small wheel in a miniature machine, which, if multiplied millions of times, forms the going concern that is you. But if enough of the cogs are broken through ionizing radiation, the gears grind, the machines falter and stop, the factory shuts down. Each of the four kinds of missiles discharged by radioactive substances has its own ballistic behavior. To observe them attacking the body, they must be symbolized far out of proportion, magnified millions of times. Gamma rays are the most penetrating, but the least ionizing. Not so penetrating, but more ionizing, are neutrons, which are not rays, but particles. Neutrons and gamma rays are external dangers, able to shoot into the human body easily. Alpha particles cannot penetrate the skin. Theta particles can cause surface burns, if the assault is sufficiently concentrated and sustained. Both are able to gain entry through the eating and breathing of radioactive matter or via breaks in the skin. Once inside, this so-called hot stuff takes up residence in various parts of the body, giving off highly ionizing alpha and beta particles. And how long does this radio rat race go on? The body will succeed in casting off some of this material, but it is a long, slow process. There's no effective method for dislodging the stuff. No known way of neutralizing or destroying it. There is no method of hastening its half-life, which is the time required for 50% of the substance to decay. With some substances, it is a matter of less than a second. But if you had some plutonium inside you, you wouldn't make any plans to celebrate the event. Plutonium's half-life is 24,000 years. The various kinds of cells which make up the parts of the body differ in their vulnerability to radiation. Most sensitive are lymph cells, such as those found in the tonsils. Next is bone marrow, which manufactures red and white blood cells. Then the sex cells, followed by tendons, and cartilage, as in the nose, muscles, and nerves, the toughest of all. In general, cells which reproduce rapidly and whose efficient functioning depends on that ability are most effective. Radiation halts their reproduction, which is a simple process of one cell